So you uh, majored in English, yeah. um, it, you know, in college, uh, and when you graduated Tulane in the early 1990s, you moved to Hollywood, and then you get into stand-up comedy. Yeah. Why? I mean, I actually got into it right at the end of college. You know, I'm a, I'm a critical guy, uh, you know, and uh, I think we were at a stand-up show, and I told one of my friends um, how, how bad I thought the comic was that was on stage, and he signed me up for an amateur night. So I did it, and again, it was... You know, I don't know what I did to pursue this stuff as a kid, but I always wanted to be Woody Allen or Albert Brooks. That was my goal, Jerry Seinfeld. Um, I didn't really do anything to pursue it till I, the day I landed here, but that was kind of always the thought. I wanted to make movies, I wanted to star in movies, I wanted to write them, I wanted to direct them. And, um, you know, I didn't do any of that as a kid, so I don't have like a Spielberg story that I made this great film when I was 14 or anything like that, but it's just always what I wanted to do. It was always what I was interested in doing. How much of your routine do you remember? I mean, I'm not gonna do any jokes if that's what you ask, but I remember all of it. And um, I, I got Andrew Dice Clay's number, who's now my friend, and I used to call him and leave jokes in his voice on his machine and say, if you like him, call me. Did I, he, he know who you were? No, no, no. Did he, he ever call back? No, he never called back. Well, I, I, don't, I asked him, you know, and he said, I think I do remember that, but I, you know, go, oh, you know, and I would do like the whole thing, so. Well, like, what, what would you leave for him on the... I mean, just, you know, if you know Andrew Dice Clay, you know, I would just do his kind of humor, which was, you know, I banged this girl last night. She said, you know, what did that, what did that mean to you? You know, it means I don't have to jerk off tonight, honey. <laughs> oh, you know, and I would do stuff like that. So I would leave it on his machine and he never called me back. He probably used it anyway. But um, so, uh, but stand up went, you know, went pretty well for me in the, in the lazy form that I was. I was not like a... I was not a guy who could sit around five nights a week like the great comedians will all tell you they did or seven nights a week until they'd get on. I was like a once every two week kind of comedian. I didn't like living in bars. It was just wasn't my thing. But I had a, I, I was pretty good. Things, things were, I, I didn't really have a bad night except one night in New York. You know, it was the only, only real bad night I what had. What happened? Well, you know, things were going kind of well, you know, and I, um, I felt confident, and um, so I went to New York, and I, I rented out a place. I said, I'll fill it, you know, and I'm, I'm somewhat popular in Long Island, and I managed to, to fill up Caroline's with uh, 350, 400 people to come see me, all my friends from childhood, my parents, some relatives and everything, and I felt very confident. I was still an amateur at this point, so all the professional comedians that they still bring in the whole night, like, I think my name, I don't remember, but I think my name was like on the marquee, I think I took it out or whatever, you know? yeah. and all these professional comedians were like, who the hell is Doug Ellen? And they were just abusing me for the entire night until I finally came up. And I came up, and, and again, I'm not gonna do any jokes, but. Were, were you, you confident when you came up? I was Because I was even with them yeah. all I mean, using you, know, you the whole I, night? I'm not, I wasn't like an impressionist comedian. I had, okay. you know, thoughtful, smart, intelligent comedy. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I never really had a horrific night, you know, mm -hmm. in Los Angeles. And, uh, you know, you never start off with a new joke. I don't know if that's a rule of comedians, but I'm telling you, don't start off with a new joke. Even if you're 100% convinced it's funny. So anyway, I started off with some new joke and there were crickets. And I just went into a full scale panic attack and I just said, thank you all for coming, good night. And I walked off the stage. Are you serious? And yeah, yeah. And, um, and my father's best friend called me the next day and told me, he's like, you're killing your parents, I mean, you understand? And I'm like, things were going pretty well in LA. I just made a short film that I sold to Showtime and I uh, got my first agent and I really wasn't planning on pursuing stand-up as a career. Um, but uh, yeah, they were, they, that was a, a complete disaster for all of my friends. I think everyone who was there that night would tell you they thought like I would be back in New York, you know, um, working at my dad's accounting agency in a couple of months after that. How did you handle it when you walked off the stage? I mean, not well. I, I drank a lot and went home and went to sleep and tried to forget about it. But I mean, it was, it was one of the, you know, the pivotal moments of my life of like, wow, that was really bad, you know? For months, I was dealing with people calling me going, what are you doing with your life? What's wrong with you? You have no talent. You have no ability whatsoever. Why are you doing this? So, you know, it was one of those kind of, okay, I'm going to show everybody.